Hey guys, it's Dean. Welcome to Manflow Yoga. You're about to watch a Yoga for SI joint uh, workout. This is going to focus on strengthening your core, strengthening your hips, and then relieving some of that tension by stretching the muscles in your hips. This is an active 35 minute workout. Uh, it is, again, it's active, it is not restorative. It's focused on building strength, which is going to help with SI joint pain, SI joint pain in the long run. So, hope you enjoy this workout. I'll see you uh, in just two seconds. We're gonna start off with some core work on your back. So, get onto the ground. If you have a block, <laughs> grab one. That's going to be useful. And we're gonna start off with just one leg. Bring your knee in toward your chest. Grab your knee and then lift the opposite foot and just hold that for a couple breaths. So, we've got two major focuses of this workout. One is relieving tension, stretching the area around your SI joint. And then the other is getting your lower abdominals stronger, so getting those muscles more active to relieve pressure on the SI joint. Go ahead and switch sides. And yes, we can stretch a lot, we can work on relieving that tension, but what's going to solve that over time is strengthening your lower abs, of course being more active, um, but it can't just be stretching alone. We need to work on strengthening the abs as well. All right, then bring the legs back in, knees over your hips. Go ahead and place a block between your thighs. Squeeze tight and then press your hands into your thighs, thighs back into your hands. You can keep your back relaxed on the ground if you want. Or bring your neck off the ground a little bit for a little more core workout. Make sure your neck isn't strained so your neck isn't way up here like this, but it's somewhere neutral and keeping your neck long. And then really pushing your hands into your thighs, squeezing the block tightly between your legs. So you're getting more inner thigh engagement, better core engagement. And do three more breaths here. So just getting the abs more active. In particular, the lower abs and the hip flexors. So we have to think about the body as a whole. So when we look at where the pain is in the lower back, I'm going to look at the opposite, right? So we'll look at the lower back. Well, let's look at the front of the, uh, the lower torso, and that happens to be your abs and your hip flexors. One more breath here. Keep pushing, keep pushing. All right, and then go ahead and release. Take the block away, and we're going to move into a recline twist from here. So arms straight out to the sides, knees over the hips. Slowly bring your legs over toward the right, slowly, slowly. Keep your abs tight. You want to try and get your abs facing directly to the outside. And then roll back your left shoulder to the ground. Stick it out to the side. Pull your left rib cage toward the ground. And keep your abs tight. So I want you to think of this stretch as an active uh, muscle engagement for your core. That's going to stretch your lower back. You might hear a couple of pops in the, in the, in the lower back, and that's fine. That's just creating some space and try and breathe as deeply as possible here. So this is helping to open up that space in your lower back. But again, at the same time, I want you to keep your abs active. So we're turning those muscles on to help alleviate pressure in the SI joint. All right, let's go ahead and switch sides. So knees back to the middle, recenter yourself, breathe in, and then bring it out to the left. And now abs start facing out to the side. You want to pull down your right shoulder and then pull your right rib cage down. So you're tightening, uh, tightening the obliques, tightening the intercostal muscles and then pulling those down. Breathing as deeply as you can, but still staying engaged. So lots of muscle control as you're doing this. And if your shoulder doesn't quite touch the ground, that's okay. As you breathe into the posture, you'll work deeper into it. Eventually, your shoulder will touch the ground. If not today, eventually, maybe a few days from now, maybe a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months. Just keep practicing consistency. That is what will bring progress. Two more breaths here. And again, keep the actives, uh, keep the abs active. Ab abtic, avtive. Keep avtive, abs active. Sorry, that was a bad joke. Pull your ribs down, keep pushing the shoulder down, lengthen your neck, one more breath. All right, 
and then come back to the middle. And we're going to do a few reverse crunches here to strengthen the lower abdominals and again lengthen that space in the lower back, take some of that pressure out. So arms along your sides and you can relax your arms along the ground. And then we're going to bring the legs straight out in front of you. If you can't your goal is to get them about a foot off the ground. If that hurts your back, bring them up a little bit higher at first. And just hold that. Squeeze your inner thighs together. Reach your toes toward your calves. We're going to do a couple breaths here. Very firm through your abs. Firm through the inner thighs. And then slowly squeeze your knees back toward your shoulders tightly, as tight as you can. So make your hip flexors really tight. If you want, you can even bring your hands and push into your hands with your knees to show you what that hip flexor engagement feels like. One more breath. And then bring the legs back out. And this time, see if you can bring them a little bit lower. Squeeze your legs together once more. Make sure there's no pain in your back. If you feel pain in your back, bring the legs up a little bit higher. And think of reaching your tailbone toward your heels. So lengthening your lower back, but you want to keep your spine neutral. So you're not pressing your lower back all the way into the ground. You want to have a little bit of a lift to your lower back, but not to the point where it hurts your spine. All right, and then bring it back in. Squeeze your knees toward your shoulders, tight as you can, just a couple breaths here. If you want the hands to provide that extra, or feel what that uh, pressure feels like, bring the hands there and push. One more breath. And then one more, back out. Just three breaths, squeeze your inner thighs toward one another. Reach your toes back toward you. Stay controlled. Keep the abs tight. Really focused on squeezing your hips together here as well. One more breath here. And then pull it back in. Knees toward your hands. Press into your hands. Knees as close to the shoulders as possible. So really push them back. Get the hip flexors active. And then release. All right, we're going to flip over and move into a child's pose from here. So we talked about, I talked about at the beginning how we're working on, uh, on strengthening the abs. Now we're going to do a little bit of stretching. So it's going to kind of flip flop back and forth between this. And many of the postures will do both. Sometimes we'll be stretching and strengthening. So I want you to sit your butt toward your heels. They don't have to touch, but get them close. Keep your chest lifted. We're going to keep the spine neutral. So I don't want you to round your back. And I don't want you to arch your back, but neutral spine. And then bring your arms out in front of you. Keep the front of your stomach long. Keep your abs tight. Push your hands into the ground. And you want to try and keep your hips active. So you can squeeze your glutes if you want. You could squeeze your legs toward one another. Uh, whichever one you choose, just make sure the hips stay active. So this is um, an active pose. It's not a passive stretch. We're working on the core here. We're working on hips. Arms are pressing down. Think of belly button lifting toward the spine. One more breath here. All right. And then we're going to move into a plank. So hands under your shoulders, index fingers face forward, tuck the toes, lift your knees, shoulders right over the hands, biceps wrap forward, belly button up. And you want to make sure that your back is not arched in this position, so we're not letting the hips sink down. We're lifting the belly button toward the lower back, making the spine neutral. So again, focusing on abs here. If you feel pain in your lower back, Lift your belly button up a little bit or tighten your abs. Squeeze your abdominal muscles. And this is going to, again, alleviate that, SA, that SI joint pain because we're focusing on getting the abs more active, strengthening the abs. A couple more breaths here. Keep the thighs tight. Keep your whole body engaged. Try squeezing your hands toward your feet and your feet toward your hands. That's going to add a little bit more core activation. One more breath. 
and then release your knees down. Good. All right. And we're going to move up into a lunge from here. So if you have blocks, I want you to use your blocks, place them on either side of your mat, on the inside of the mat, not the outside. Step your right foot up, and we're going to tuck the toes, lift the knee, and come up into a supported runner's lunge. So I want you to have a neutral spine here. So I don't want you to lean back like this, because that's going to put an arch into your spine and could put some pressure on the SI joint. So I want, and I don't want you to fall forward like this and round the back. So we're using the blocks so we can make a neutral or a straight line with the spine. You're going to push down hard through your right foot and get the glute active. One other cause of SI joint uh, instability or discomfort is lack of a glute activation. So I want you to really push down through the right foot, squeeze your right hip, and get your hip more active. At the same time, squeeze your left thigh as well. So we're getting both thighs active. If you want, use your exhale to sink a little bit deeper into this. Keep your chest pulling forward. One more breath. All right. And then go ahead and step all the way up, up to standing. And we're just going to take a step back and do the other side. So now left foot is forward. Right leg back, knee over the ankle on the front foot. Drive your left hip toward the ground. So really get that left glute engaged. You want to push down through the heel, push down through the ball of the toe. Squeeze your right thigh. That's going to help you get a better stretch through the right hip. And we want to make this active. Remember, it's not a passive stretch. Both legs are active here. And then pull your chest forward and up to keep your chest upright and also get some more core engagement. So if we just fall forward like this, we're not going to have a lot of core engagement and that's going to put more weight in the leg. Keep the chest upright and facing forward. That's going to give you better core engagement and also get a better stretch to the right hip. Squeeze your legs toward one another as you're pushing down through the left foot. So lots of things going on here. It's okay if you don't remember it all. Just be more conscious of it. Be more aware of it, and you'll get better over time. One more breath here. Slow breathing, slow and controlled, in and out of the nose. All right, and then go ahead and stand up all the way. Good. All right, we're going to keep with the theme of keeping your back neutral. So I want you to do a balance. So we're going to balance on your right foot. Bring your left knee up to hip level. Stand straight up, so we're not leaning back at all. We want to stay perfectly upright. Drive your hand into your thigh, make that hip active. This is very similar to what we were doing on the ground at the beginning, but now I've got a balance with this as well. You can turn your right palm to face forward, push your head toward the ceiling. And if you're looking in a mirror, you want to look as if you're standing. It shouldn't be any different than if you were standing on both feet. You just got one knee up at hip level pressing the hand to the thigh. And again, that's going to turn on the hip flexor. All right, go ahead and switch sides. So now balancing on your left foot, bring the right knee up, push your hand into your thigh. Don't lean back at all. Stay perfectly upright. Left palm faces forward, press the top of your head toward the ceiling. Try to lengthen your spine, so reaching the tailbone down. And you should feel your, your left hip active here. So squeezing your left glute. And you might want to, so when you don't activate your hip, that causes you to kind of turn out to the side a little bit. You want to make sure that your hips stay lined up in the same direction your toes are facing. So when you engage your hip, that helps uh, facilitate that. One more breath here. And then go ahead and release. All right. Thanks for joining me for this workout today. Make sure you subscribe. We put out lots of videos like this on a very regular basis. And to get full access to all of my workouts, my programs, tutorials, and more, head to manfulyoga.com. Sign up for a seven-day trial. It's just $1. Thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you on the next video.